Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, NVMe flash drives have been on the market for a little while now, and, and they're being widely adopted. Uh, but these drives bring really two challenges uh, that, to the infrastructure that we have to deal with. Number one, they're incredibly high performance, and they're also low latency. And so this really stresses storage infrastructures to their, almost to their breaking point to try to figure out how to optimize and get the full potential of this technology. Joining me on the light board today to discuss this is Josh Goldenhar. He is VP of Products at Accelera. Josh, thanks for joining us today. And thanks. It's a pleasure to be here, George. So let's let's jump into this. I mean, I, you know, I, I see this come out a lot where we've got these drives that are per driver generating hundreds of thousands of IOPS, and when you put them in a big system on, on a storage network, you're not getting anything close to that. What's what's the deal there? So you're absolutely hitting the point right off the bat. Uh, basically, what we're seeing is when you try to scale out, when you buy these expensive but very, very high performance devices, you generally hit uh, one of three problems, if not all three. Right. So basically, the first one you hit is that you have an expensive, um, generally high capacity, high performance device, but you just don't get a good utilization. Now, so utilization in terms of performance, capacity, both? It's actually both. Okay. So we're seeing these devices come out very commonly in 8 to 11 terabyte range. Uh, they're going to be moving very, very quickly into the 16 to 32 and even larger. Sure. So it's capacity uh, utilization, but it's also performance utilization. Okay. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you've purchased a device that can do 750 to 800,000 IOPS. And if you put multiples of these in a server, you very quickly run out of CPU within that server. Sure. So it's this kind of catch-22. To get the best performance, you put the NVMe inside the server. Right. But then you can't fully utilize it. Yeah, makes so sense. So once you get past, say, four of these drives in a server, you can't utilize it. And so you want to gain that both performance utilization and capacity utilization. Okay. So now the second problem is that to combat exactly what we're talking about, uh, all flash array vendors, especially traditional, say, well, hey, there's no problem. We're putting NVMe in our all flash arrays. Or you have newcomers that say, hey, no problem. We have this proprietary all flash array. Right. Proprietary, of course, means lock-in. Yeah. And usually that lock-in comes with a dollar sign. Sure. Um, so uh, they lock you in, or they put the NVMe inside a traditional all flash array. Right. But if we just note that a moment ago we said, one NVMe drive can be 750,000 IOPS. Right. I challenge you to go out and look at all flash arrays that are out there, even ones that support NVMe, and you'll see the entire uh, IO capacity they have for the array is only 750, maybe a million IOPS. Right, and so you're getting IO. a small percentage of the total potential. You're right? getting one drive's worth of, right. of right. IO operations. So it's a, it's a bottleneck issue. Okay. Basically, that's it. If you, if you turn to the traditional all flash arrays, yeah. They're architected in such a way that even though they're adding NVMe, they're just simply not ready for NVMe. Gotcha. They so that, is that the that. second thing? So that is the second one, is traditional arrays uh, just can't, we'll, we'll highlight this, um, are a bottleneck. So it's a very interesting, that's kind of interesting to me because we've gone from, it's, media now has gotten sort of that worst to first uh, sort of technology where it yeah. used to be hard drives and it was always the hard drive's fault and now it's everything else's fault because NVMe is so flat, fast. Right, you're, you're exactly seeing it. I mean, yeah. you think about it, um, why did arrays come into being? An array of drives. The right. only way to get to higher levels of IOPS was to take a lot of these slow storage devices and yeah. aggregate them. Right. We've kind of flipped it on its head. So yeah, a great observation totally is, it, is, is now you've got one device sure. that you almost need to split amongst a lot of controllers. Right, yeah. And so really the third problem then is I want that local performance. Right? I, that's what I want. Right. But I want the management and convenience. I can spell. Yeah, it's like the hardest word to ever to spell. Of, uh, of SAN. Right. So that's the three problems that we see, is that what's brought up is that utilization is poor of these devices, mm -hmm. and they're a very important resource, a, a costly resource. Well, and I think just to kind of hit on that one more time, because yeah. it's a pet peeve of mine, but 
it, it's going to get worse, right? Because as the capacity continues to increase, exactly. I mean, this is just exactly. going to be a nightmare. Exactly. We have the, the new, uh, fondly known as the ruler form factor, also M.3 coming yeah. out. And they're talking about, in the long form factor of that, as much as 128 terabytes yeah. on a single stick. Yeah. Uh, there are systems that are out now from various vendors that you can get a, a petabyte of storage in one U. Wow. So what and do you then, do with that? And then the bottleneck issue is just traditional flash array vendors sticking NVMe drives in their systems and not optimizing anything else in the environment, I guess, right? It's, yeah, it's a factor of, um, if we really look at it, mm -hmm. um, these controllers often are x86 based. Right. So they're x86 computers that are serving out a certain number of IOPS. Right. And when you don't do synthetic testing, when, you, when the IOPS are are actually being used by an application, right. you find that really that limit is going to get up there in, in a million, maybe a couple of million. Yeah. And then if you have the traditional dual controller architecture, you have to have cache coherency. Sure. So when you add that protocol overhead, we're really not seeing for sustained IOPS more than you know, say a million yeah, IOPS out of a, a dual controller box. And it's really that dual controller architecture that's the issue. So I'm assuming you guys solved this problem. Can you talk about what you guys are doing to, to address these issues? Yeah, of course you can. That's a great idea. Okay. So what we do is it looks a lot like what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, you can use local NVMe in each server. Okay. So if we go ahead and we have servers here. Let me put four up. So what we have is, is four servers, application servers. These are common servers off the shelf. Okay. And each one depicted here has a single NVMe drive. Okay. Today, you get the best performance by running your application here or here or here, and it sees only the local drive. Sure, yeah. Our software goes ahead and takes all these across a network, an Ethernet or an InfiniBand network, and it makes it into a pool of storage. So rather than four individual drives that are bound only to that server, if each of these were four terabytes, I have 16 terabytes of NVMe storage. Gotcha. Okay. Now, is this uh, NVMe or fabric uh, or a form of protocol standpoint, it, or what do we uh, use as a network? Our protocol to, talk, to link the drives together mm -hmm. is an internal protocol. However, you can access these if you want via NVMe over okay. fabric. The power of our system actually comes in our client, which looks like a block driver to the system. Gotcha, okay. And we can use NVMe over fabric as a transport okay. or our own transports. And there are advantages and disadvantages to each. So I'm assuming that your, your client is optimized for very low overhead and, and all that kind of good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So if you take now a server out here that has no NVMe but is linked on the network, I can go ahead and I can create a logical volume. Okay. But we'll, uh, we'll choose a different color. So imagine here, again, my four drives. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make these a mirror and make these a mirror and stripe across them. Okay. So I have two mirrored pairs. Yeah. I can create a logical volume here. And this can be of whatever size I want. I had 16 terabytes, so let's make this a four terabyte okay. logical volume. And using our block driver here, I attach this over the network, and this is a completely virtual device. Gotcha, okay. Our intelligent block driver in this application server sees this as what looks like a local block device. It doesn't know it's a not an NVMe drive. Okay. But it's really an NVMe drive that not only gets the performance, read performance of all four drives, write performance of two of the drives, mm -hmm. It also has protection against a host failure. This host can fail. Right, sure. Or this drive can fail. And your data stays protected. Yet it's at the same performance. As you had asked, it's very, very low overhead. Mm -hmm. We add a mere five microseconds wow. of okay. overhead. So it's extremely low. That's now this good. is the, uh, there's two advantages we have. You mentioned NVMe over fabric as mm -hmm. well. Because the question comes up, why aren't you just using NVMe over fabric? Sure. NVMe over fabric is a great transport for that. You can get about eight microseconds over the network using NVMe over fabric. Okay. Not quite as low as us. Yeah. But, but what's low the enough, exactly. So, so let's, let's dismiss that. Let's say yeah. it's equal. The difference is, is this logical block driver is doing all that work of this magic protection for you. Okay. And this now, so this is how we 
we eliminate the utilization issue. Sure. You and now so can now, go ahead. Now you don't care how big these drives, you as the IT guy using this stuff, don't care how big these drives get because I can carve it up as I need, correct? Exactly. You carve okay. it up whatever size you want, whatever data protection level you want. Mm -hmm. And if you make a mistake, you can grow logical volumes. So this, it kind of operates like a SAN, right. but it's very much a new age SAN. Gotcha. Okay. So And completely virtual. Off-the-shelf components. Uh, this is uh, regular NICs servers, NVMe drives, there's no proprietary hardware here. And so I think I can guess, but just quickly, how do you guys, uh, how does this architecture address the traditional bottlenecks? And you're guessing correctly that how we also eliminate the bottleneck is this special sauce right here. Okay. This driver is running on every application server and it's doing the RAID protection and the striping. Okay. You'll notice what's missing here, there is no centralized controller. Right. I can go out in the current version of NVMesh to 128 hosts okay. that contain NVMe drives, and the drives per host can be anywhere. There's some systems that can take 60 drives. Okay. Very commonly, you can have some that take 24. Okay. So we can span to multi-petabyte pools sure. uh, in the product today. It's very, very scalable. There is no bottleneck. And so by eliminating that bottleneck, uh, we can, in as, as, as small as 2U, and there's a 2U server that really is four servers inside mm -hmm. and holds 24 drives. Gotcha. Uh, we can get about 80 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Wow. And just shy of 20 million random read 4K IOPS out of this platform. So this is 2U, and it's 20 million IOPS and 80 gigabytes. Per second. I mean, it's okay for a home system, but I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know. it's a, you so, understand at home. So, <laughs> a couple of videos there. So the uh, so then let's wrap up with. Uh, I I think obviously we can start to see the picture here, but uh, how this uh, takes care of the need for local performance and the flexibility of a SAN. So let's reiterate that one more time too. So absolutely, uh, and again, you touched on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Stealing my thunder. Sorry. Um, is that uh, you, what you want is local performance. Right. Um, we've gotten spoiled. People have been putting NVMe inside the application servers. Sure. It gives them the performance. But they just don't think that they can get that performance with the convenience and manageability of SAN. Right. Because as evidenced, when you go to the traditional vendors, and we all know who they are, right. you're getting like a million IOPS out of a box that has something like 18 or 16 million IOPS worth of NVMe drives. Right. So you say, well, obviously I can't get it, but we're here to tell you that you can. You can solve this. You can get local performance because with NVMesh, when you go ahead and adopt this model and you use the drives remotely with logical volumes, you're only adding about five microseconds to your read latency. Wow. So to put that in perspective, a lot of these drives are somewhere around the 80 microsecond mark. You can do a read across the network to a logical volume in only 85 microseconds. So it's practically, Zero overhead. It yeah. is local speed, yet you get all the manageability uh, of a SAN. And that basically gives you the convenience of a SAN with the performance of local. So uh, before we uh, finish up the video, why don't you tell the folks about, a little bit about what you guys are doing over at Accelero and what your guys' uh, plans are. Well, uh, we're, we're very happy that we're getting a lot of uptake of the product. Um, uh, in, in the past year, we had a, a very significant growth in sales, and we're on a trajectory to duplicate that or keep that going. So we're seeing that growth, we're seeing the adoption, uh, and it is because we're really letting people do what they thought was impossible. Are there specific markets that you're seeing uh, do real well for you guys? Uh, we are. It is the ones that probably will become as a great surprise. Yeah. So uh, the analytics market, now no matter what you call it, so AI, machine <laughs> learning, deep learning, right. these are analytic processes. Sure that are unique to GPUs, right. but very, very applicable there. So we're starting to see uh, some take up there. Uh, some of the traditional uh, financial FSI mm -hmm. models, uh, people always say, oh, you must be great for uh, day trading. Right. But it's not, it's not during the day, it's during the night. Okay. So it's really algorithmic back testing. And that is, mm -hmm. is when basically people tweak their models, the more time they can get through all the data, the more, the more models they can run overnight, mm -hmm. They basically beat their competitors by tweaking their models and making them better for the next day's trading. Awesome. So that's where we're seeing some uh, pickup. Uh, traditional HPC is we're actually seeing a lot of interest there. Uh, both uh, raw as a, a local burst buffer, 
um, as a uh, local scratch okay. so or local scratch on demand is sure. something that's actually starting to pick up, uh, which means basically you have a cluster and you need some place to write to very, very, very quickly. Right. And usually you would go to local scratch. It's this model here. And they put drives in the nodes that need that local scratch. But you hit that same problem. Uh, if you needed five terabytes and you only put in a four terabyte drive, you can't get it. Awesome. So by integrating uh, with certain scheduling options, with some file systems that are out there, very, very popular, you can have a local scratch on demand through a local file system or even a shared file system. And uh, we're going to have some more news on that in the next uh, upcoming months. Awesome. OK, great. Well, Josh, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Uh, it's that. been a pleasure. Thanks very much. So there you have it. Uh, if you really need to leverage the full performance of NVMe and, and really who, why would you buy the technology if you can't, uh, technologies like Acceleros are really the way to go. We really need to rethink the architecture and how we're doing things. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.